Okay, let's go with the next concept I want to work on, has an electric shock. All right, we can see the power supply here on the secondary, current leaves the source, returns to the source. If somebody makes contact with the energized conductor, then electrons will leave the source, return to the source through the light bulb, but also travel through the individual, travel to the foot, getting back to the source. That means that there's a parallel path. This person is in parallel with this light. What's real important is we're going to get into grounding and bonding, grounding and bonding theory, and you guys are going to be like, what the heck is he talking about? I thought, listen, if you don't understand electrical theory, I would recommend that you stop right now. Or at any point that you start getting confused, say, listen, contact MikeHolt.com, go to the Internet, call my office up and say, listen, I thought I understood electricity. I thought I understand, but I don't know what he's talking about. You need to get the electrical theory book, which is theory, which is practical applications for the purposes of understanding the NEC. You're not going to understand this if you don't have a good understanding of electrical theory. This is not a theory course. This is a quick course of some fundamentals. We know that you know theory. All right, let's go back to our graphic here. So electrons leave the source. They travel back to the source through the light bulb and the person in a parallel path. And the laws of parallel says this. Voltage of resistors in parallel are what? They remain the same. Number three. Voltage in a parallel circuit remains the same. That's another important concept that we want to have, okay? Write it down. Voltage of a parallel circuit remains, every resistor will remain the same, same voltage. Let's go back to this graphic here. That means that if I show a voltmeter over here, that the voltmeter across this light bulb would be 120, and the voltmeter across this human would be what? 120. You guys follow the logic there? Now, you can get shocked with your hand to your foot with a conductive path to the earth, or from hand to hand that's making conductive path back over to the earth. Now watch this. Electrons, are they trying to go to ground? Go back to our notes. What was the note that we said? With number two, right? Source. Electrons are not going to ground, are they? They're going what? Back to the source. To, to number one, to the source. So looking at this graphic here, you say, well, wait a minute now. Electrons are going to ground. No, they're not going to ground. They're doing what? They are using the earth as a return path because this system is grounded, which means since you have the system grounded, I'll talk about what a system grounding is in a little while. Just accept that if a system is grounded and you make contact with something and you're standing on the earth, the electrons are not going to ground. They're taking the path that it is to get to where? To the source. Now look at, look at the graphic here. So they make a contact from the hand. It goes to the heart, to the foot, and it travels through the earth. They're not trying to go to ground. They're trying to, they're, they are going to the source, not trying to get to the source. They are going to the source. If you make it from hand to hand, again, this is what, 120 volts across the light? And across this person, we'd have a voltmeter. It'd be 120 volts across this person. Now, the severity of electric shock, how severe is this, is dependent on the path through the body it flows and the magnitude of the current. Let's watch this. This represents resistance. From this hand to this hand represents 1,000 ohms. Okay? That should be 1,000 ohms. And from this hand to this foot, it would be what? 1,000 ohms. Ohms. This represents the resistance from hand to hand. Now, these values from the CEI 1984 standard, you guys can look it up to get the information there. Now, hand to your stomach is 500 ohms. That means that if you're leaning on a bar joist and you happen to touch something, your resistance just went down from hand to hand is 1,000. Hand to your stomach is what? It's 500 ohms traveling through your heart. So you can see that depending upon the path to the bodies, determine how much you're going to be impacted, which we'll talk about, which is the heart. The key here is it takes small amount of currents through your heart that cause you to, to die, to become electrocuted. And current is a function of Im impedance. Let's take a look at this next slide. Current, which is how many amps is traveling through your body, is dependent on the contact voltage and the resistance of the path that it flows through the body. So here. The resistance of this body is 1,000 ohms. How do we get that? We were over here. This is the CEI standard in 1984 was established. Hand to hand or hand to feet is 1,000 ohms. We'll go with the worst case. Now, this 1,000 ohms, worst case, hand, could be a, uh, hand to hand could be a lot more than 1,000 ohms. I mean, you know, it could be 5,000 5, ohms. It could be 10,000 ohms. But it could be a lot less. Are you wet? Are you an old-time electrician, hard, rough hands where you kind of 
got to touch the fingers and try to measure that voltage because your contact resistance is so high. But, but it's a variable. Are you gripping around it? Are you just touching it? So there, but we got to work with something. So we're working with 1,000 ohms as a standard. That that's the number. It could be lower and it could be higher. But let's just go with 1,000 ohms, looking at that value. If you have a 1,000 ohm resistor connected, what? In parallel, again, with this load here, that means this person, if I put a voltmeter between these two things right here, between the two hands right here, the voltage between these two points here is going to be 120 volts. If you take a 1,000 ohm resistor and you apply 120 volts to it, then that means a current leaving the source, traveling through the person, through the body, returning back over to the source. Again, right? Electrons are not trying to go to ground. No, electrons are not going to ground. Electrons are going to the source. We can do the math. I is equal to E over R. We're working with resistance. We're not going to worry about impedance, so it's all the same thing. Uh, the current is 120 volt circuit, typical circuit, person's 1,000 ohms, it's 120 milliampers. In other words, it's 0.12 amperes. Well, what does that mean? It means nothing. It's 120 milliampers, 120 milliampers, or 0.12 amps. It means nothing until we put it into the context. So let's, let's apply the context we're looking for. Electrical sensation is 0.3 to 0.4 milliampere. In other words, I sense something. I notice something. Somebody says, you know, I, I'm feeling a tingle. They can barely feel something. So that's less than one half of one one thousandth of one ampere. Remember, hand-to-hand -hand contact at 1,000 ohms at 120 volts is 120 milliampers. You're going to feel it at one half of one one thousandth of an ampere. So that's just perception. Let's go to the slide again. The next thing is you can perceive it, but you're not uncomfortable. Then you go perception, and then you let go. You're like, hold on. Whoa, I just got shocked. So we don't know what the, but it, that's about one milliampere. Now, you notice that there's two different values, the smaller value to the higher value. We'll talk about that. The next one we want to look at is the maximum let go threshold. That's when you've, you got on something, and you're like, oh, you're getting shocked, but Above that value, you cannot let go. So that's, a, and if you can't let go, game over. You're going to die. Now let's go over to the last issue, which has to do with the fibrillation. Now, ventricular fibrillation, you see, the heart itself works off of an electrical signal, and it has its own power supply. So it has its own power supply, and it generates its own energy, and it also generates um, the electrical signals, and it tells its heart what to do. It's not the brain that does it. You've seen movies where they cut out the heart, and you see the heart pumping, okay? The body works off of 40 hertz frequency. So now the body's on 40 hertz frequency. We work 60 hertz AC, 50 hertz, 60 hertz AC in the United States, 50 hertz AC in Europe. So we're real close to tuning the frequency of AC circuits to the heart and the body's frequency at 40 hertz. And once you get past the skin and you get into the blood, now you get an electrolyte, which is a conductor. You start hitting nerves. Nerves are what? Nerves are designed to carry electricity. You start getting muscle fibers, which are in parallel. And all you have to do is get 50 millionth of an ampere through the heart. We're not talking milliamperes. We're talking microcurrents. Traffic. That's why when you get into healthcare facilities, it's a whole other ballgame. You get into swimming pools. You get in when there's water. Particularly when you get invasive to the body, it's major problems. But no matter what happens, once you get the heart to get confused, now imagine, heart has its own power supply, has its own signal. It knows what it's doing. It's sending out signals to open and close chamber. And all of a sudden, something comes in at the wrong time, at the right frequency. It gets the heart confused. Now the heart is trying to reset itself. It's trying to, to, to get it right. And all it's going is like this. It's called ventricular fibrillation. It's not pumping blood. It's not hitting the right chambers the way it's supposed to be hitting the right chambers. What do they do? They do a defibrillator. They hit that thing and they, boom. What are they trying to do? They're trying to stop. Stop. Once they stop the heart to do what? They hit it a second time. Boom. Try to get the frequency. Try to get the heart going again. What we don't want to do is we don't want to get an electrical circuit in some way or somebody get an electrical circuit for a fraction of a second where it gets into the heart, it gets a heart a ventricular fibrillation, and then it's over. Now, here's an example of the determining. This is a study was done in 1960, I think it was, and I can't remember. It's a Dazzler, D-A. Charles, Charles Dazzler. 
Diesel, Charles Diesel. Yeah, he's and, in Cal Berkeley. And, and, and so anybody wants information, you get with our office, or you can go on the internet, I'm sure you can find this thing easily. He's the one that did a, he's the one that determined GFCIs. He would hook up somebody, put his hand on here, put a hand on there, and say, okay, we're going to turn this up, and we want you to perceive it. And that's how they got these numbers. And then, here's a girl, okay, she's holding it. And over here, you can see this guy right here. Now, you know he's not letting go. Now, you don't see all the photos in here, but the best part of the study, when you look at the photos, when you see the guys that are doing it, they're all, like, all contorted. You see all the other guys in the background? They're doing that. And so, you know, you know, if you had, there were, there were 40 students, 22 males and 18 females. The females are like, oh, I'm done. So the threshold values are lower for women than they are for men. But the studies have actually shown it's not because of the women being more sensitive than men. I got five daughters and a wife, I, I kind of understand how that thing works, really. It's that the woman is lighter than a man. The study was done where the woman's weight was 100 pounds and the male's weight was 160. So when you see all these values here, it has to do with mass. Back to looking at our graphic here, looking at it differently. Electrical sensation, determining the perception current on the hands. So it's what? Less than one half of a milliampere. Perception let go, determining let go right here. You can see that guy, how distorted he is. So that's, and of course, you can go all the way to fib fibrillation level. So this has to do with mass. A 160-pound woman, her maximum let-go threshold would be about 16 milliampers. It's one milliampere per 10 pounds is your let-go threshold. So a 200-pound person would have a let-go threshold of what? 20 milliampers. A 50-pound child would have a let-go threshold of what? Five milliampers. GFCIs operate at what? Five milliampers plus or minus one. GFCI does not mean it's not going to kill you. It means it probably won't kill most people. But if you're 50 pounds or lower, mm, we don't know what's going to happen.